Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. I'm just making this video for the users of Free Accounting Software to show you guys how to you how to um, do your bank reconciliation in Free Accounting Software. Firstly, I want to say that this only applies if you have a BASOF hosted file, and the reason is because, um, for example, if I go into this um, local installed desktop file here, um, in, in this local file we don't even have a balance sheet or cash worksheet so we have got one page for the sales here and then you know one page for the purchases um, so one of the things I found with um, you know in the previous software over the 10 years or so that we um, were using that as the main one was that most, in fact, most of the businesses didn't do the bank reconciliation and it actually confused a lot of people. And and so with this um, uh, new version, I'm trying to keep the desktop version simple and easy to use from the micro business and where it's a hosted file, that's where I'm adding all of the features. Okay, so... Um, Going into the, uh, and you can tell when if you've got a few different businesses, you can tell which ones are hosted on the cloud because we've got the uh, type of BASOF cloud in this second column. So I'll just go into this one, and you can see here we've got a cash worksheet, we've got a sales worksheet for managing accounts receivable. So a bit different from the sales worksheet in the local file where where you just entering sales. This one actually tracks what's um, outstanding but anyway let's focus on the um, bank reconciliation here so I've entered a few transactions here um, for July just you know a couple sales and a couple purchases and um, just want to demonstrate some fairly um, uh, simple basic things in this first bank rec video so first of all um, I've just opened up this page and we are looking at the report as at 31st of August. Now these are all July transactions so I'm actually recording this video in August and that's why it's come up with the 31st of August. Um, it's a little bit of a trick you, you want to um, change this date to the to the date that you're trying to reconcile to um, so change the date and click update. Now it says cash worksheet as at 31st of July. So when you're reconciling, um, that is to be your bank statement date. And you uh, select all the transactions. Um, it, it should, um, you know, in fact, you normally have an opening bank statement balance here. I don't have that um, yet. So, um, in fact, um, I will just show you how to put the opening bank statement balance in there. So you could just go new cash transaction, um, cash received. And when we're putting an opening bank statement balance into the uh, cash worksheet we want to pick the last day of the prior accounting period so we don't pick 1 July as the opening uh, balance we actually pick 30th of June so you normally try to start on the start of a financial year or perhaps even the, the start of a quarter um, okay um, and, and that date is going to be the, the date prior to when you're starting to use the software. Now, I normally have, or the default chart of accounts has a counterparty called not applicable. Um, and this is a kind of transaction which is just recording a um, balance. Um, so it's not a, a recording a transaction with another counterparty. So we really do want that not applicable um, counterparty to be set up so let me just quickly set it up 
and I use not applicable on a lot of things where you know there is a counterparty like for example you buy fuel or something from the supermarket um, but you, you're not really that interested in tracking the entity that you're dealing with if for some reason you needed to find out it's on the docket there somewhere which is in your filing um, rather than um, within the system okay so going back to the cash worksheet new cash transaction and we're going to put in the opening balance let's say we started with a hundred dollars in the bank account now um, you have to put that to some account so I'm just going to pick um, normally we pick cash on hand um, okay so this default chart of accounts hasn't really got the account I want I'm just going to put it to loan repayments tax code has come up as GST not applicable which is the one I want um, now that's going to put our opening cash balance in but it's putting it into um, just this this account here which is not ultimately where it needs to be when you are entering um, opening balances you need to put it to all of the various um, create opening balances so um, I'll actually have to do another video on how to record your opening balances in the software but this technique just puts it somewhere so that we can move on with the bank reconciliation and sometime later set up the full balance sheet with all of the opening balances okay save that and now going back to the cash worksheet so now we've got our opening balance um, there so uh, and I should stress that this is only for the first time you're using the software. Once you've got your um, opening balances in there, going forward each month when you reconcile, you won't have to re-record that opening balance. It will carry forward from the previous reconciliation. And I'll do two months rec to, to actually show you what I mean here. Okay, so I'm reconciling to 31st of July. Now again, the worksheet has um, defaulted to 31st of August, so uh, you've got to be careful to change that to 31st of July. Okay, and then um, you select your opening balance, um, and then you uh, select the transactions that match the bank statement. If you have been going well and uh, accurately recording transactions, you might just find that you can just go and select them all and then see that the total selected amount is exactly equal to your bank statement balance as at 31st of July. Uh, if not, you might need to work through those transactions um, one by one, selecting, yep, I've got that one, you've got that one, etc. Uh, until you work out which one is incorrect, fix it, etc. Anyway, let's just uh, assume that I've entered everything correctly here and um, that is the actual bank statement balance it's got a box here to type in the bank statement balance which um, is just confirming that it balances when when you um, when you match the uh, the selected transactions this thing turns green so if it's read before if you put the balance in before you start selecting things it goes to the um, purple and then you can select the transactions and when you match it it turns green okay now in in the previous version the, the web-based version that we've had for like 10 years and whatever um, prior to this software we used to have another uh, box which which actually would prompt you for the bank statement date um, whereas in this software it is just taking this date of the report that you are looking at as the bank statement date so um, the other software 
you know, allowed you to to actually set the bank statement date here. This one does not. And you really shouldn't be, um, you know, looking at a different date on this report than what you're reconciling to. It, it's So I've taken that date away. Anyway, um, so click Post Bank Reconciliation. And what it does is it hides all that history and you just see the um, closing bank statement balance. Which is nice because as you go, um, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of history build up. Uh, it's all kind of irrelevant and doesn't make that and doesn't give you that much quality information. When you want to manage how your business is going, you want to look at your profit and loss and balance sheet, not track back through um, transactions in and out of your bank account. You can still see that history by clicking um, this um, these history things here. So. Um, this is just outstanding amounts, that's the default, but you can click other options to see the outstanding amounts plus uh, reconciled amounts that are within the last month, two months, three months, etc. So if I do that and I click update, we can see all the transactions are still there. I just want to explain a little bit of the, how this reconciliation works, is that what it does is you have your opening balance, your transactions for the month, but you also then have a negative figure here, which is the minus of the closing balance. So that whole group of transactions there to there adds up to zero. Okay. When a, and this is a kind of unique feature of free accounting software is that when that group adds up to zero, it is hidden. Okay, so um, it's hidden because it's zero. But the other and the other factor is that the date of the transaction of the group is less than the date that you're looking at. So the idea being that um, when you're looking at balance sheet accounts and the cash worksheet you're seeing um, transactions that make up the balance, not the uh, opening balance plus movements. Okay, um, Opening balance plus transactions during the um, month will give you less information. So in this case, uh, if I go to just outstanding amounts, you know, when we want to see what's our cash balance, it's really you know, we're just interested in what's in the bank account. Um, the detail of how it got there over the last 10 years is, is, isn't is better information than that. Okay, and um, I'll enter a couple August transactions to show you how the... Um, How, how how it is on a standard month where we don't have to worry about the opening balance. In fact, we've already got the June the 31st of July balance there. So let's say I'll do a couple new transactions. Um, let's say dated 10th of August. Yeah, just saving a sale. This customer has an outstanding invoice there. Perhaps you know they they might pay that. Let's say on the nineteenth of August. And this um, line needs to be deleted because it's blank. And then save. Okay, so. We go to the cash worksheet. Now this is remembered that I'm looking at the 31st of July. In this case I actually want to do August. So go forward to the 31st of August update. Um, in fact today is the 10th of August so we're not through 
August yet. So you probably wouldn't reconcile this until you got to 31st of August. Um, but in any case, let's just say we got there and, um, and you know, the balance of the bank account was 13850. So then I've got to select the transactions that balances and you can see we've got the closing bank statement balance from the prior month coming forward. Select that, we've got the transactions for the month and then post bank reconciliation and then it wraps it up to the to the next closing balance. So you can see how it sort of just rolls forward from month to month and um, you're always reconciling to that closing uh, bank statement balance. And that's the basics of um, uh, the bank rec. I will do another video to show more details about how to uh, fix common mistakes and things like that as well as how to handle multiple bank accounts. Okay, I hope this video has been useful to you and thanks for watching.